This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how to create this horse head logo using Inkscape and at any point in this tutorial you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So I'll close out of that and we'll get started. The first thing we'll do in Inkscape is set our view to custom and then we'll zoom in at 100%. We'll open up our Align and Distribute menu with this button up here. Make sure you have Last Selected chosen from this drop-down. Then we'll open up our Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu. So the first thing we will do is draw a big circle. So let's come over to the Circles and Ellipses tool. And we'll hold Control and Shift in the keyboard and click and drag on the canvas to create a big, perfectly round circle. Maybe about that size. And we'll turn that red and drop the opacity down about in half. And we'll go back to our Select tool. And we'll right-click this and go to Duplicate. And we'll turn that blue. And then we'll right-click that and duplicate that again and turn that green. And then we'll hold Control on the keyboard and click and drag this green circle down to about there, maybe about that much. And then hold Shift and click on the blue circle and go to Path, Difference. And then we'll hold control and grab this little arrow down here on the bottom and just click and drag that down so it's about maybe that, maybe about that much smaller. And then I'm going to hold control and click and drag this object off to the right. And I'm going to place it right about out here to the right side. And I'm going to zoom in to show you a little closer. I'll hold control on the keyboard and roll up on the mouse wheel. Or you can just press plus on the keyboard to zoom in. I'm going to take this far right tip right here and I'm going to hold control and I'm going to place this off to the right just a little bit outside of the circle, maybe about that much. And then we'll zoom back out. We can press 1 on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. And then I'm going to right click this image and go to duplicate. And I'm going to take that duplicated copy and just put that off to the side because we're going to use that later. Then I'll click on this blue object right here and then hold shift and click on the red circle. And let's uh, go to path, difference. And now we're going to create a, a rounded triangle. And in order to do that, we'll come over to the Stars and Polygons tool. From this menu, make sure you have stars selected. We want three corners. Spoke ratio is 0 0.7, and rounded is 0 0.2, and randomized is just 0. And once we've done that, we could hold Control and Shift in the keyboard and click and drag to create a triangle. And position it so that the bottom point is facing down like this with the top flat and the bottom point facing down. And once you've done that, we can go back to our Select tool and then hold Shift and click on our red circle. And we're going to center that on the vertical axis and then align the bottom edges. And then we can click off of the graphic to deselect everything. Now let's click on just this green object right here and then hold Control on the keyboard and grab the top arrow and click and drag this up until the top portion of the triangle exceeds the top of the red circle, maybe about that much. And once you've gotten it positioned like that, you could hold shift in the keyboard and click on the red circle so we have them both selected and go to path, intersection. Now what we could do is we can go to our, um, our rectangles and squares tool, hold control and shift in the keyboard and click and drag to create a perfectly symmetrical square like that. And then we're going to convert that to a path by going to Path, Object to Path. And then we can go to the Select tool. And let's click on this to get our rotation handles, like that. And then hold Control and grab one of these corners and just click and drag this around until the corners are facing up and down like that. And then we can go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. And let's click and drag over these center two nodes right here, the two nodes in the center on those two ends. And we're going to round them by clicking this button up here. Make selected nodes auto smooth. Go ahead and click that. And it's going to round those off like that. And we go back to our select tool. And we can grab this arrow over here to the right and just bring this in about that much. So it kind of looks like a, uh, almost like a leaf, I guess you could say. And then we'll take this object and we're just going to place it down here towards the bottom. And then hold shift in the keyboard and click on the red object so we have them both selected. We're just going to make sure that it's centered on the vertical axis. And then we can click off of the graphic to deselect everything. Now what we could do is let's click on just this green object and let's hold control and let's just make this thing a little bigger. Maybe about that big. I'm actually going to hold control and move this down a little bit. 
you want the center portion of the graphic going outside of the red the red object right there maybe like that and once you have it about this size and in this position we just hold shift on the keyboard and click on the red object and go to path difference and then we're going to go back to our uh, rec uh, cir uh, circles and ellipses tool and click on that and hold control and shift in the keyboard and just click and drag and create a nice perfectly round circle maybe about that size and we'll go back to the select tool and I'm just gonna put this over slightly to the right we don't want it in the center we want it over to the right a little bit maybe about right there and then I'm going to turn that blue and then I'll right click that and go to duplicate and then hold shift in the keyboard and click on the red object and go to path union and so it unified it into the shape and what I'll do now is I'll right click this and I'll duplicate this again and I'm going to turn that red and then hold control on the keyboard and just click and drag this off to the right a little bit maybe about that much that should be pretty good and what we could do now is we could take this red circle we could right click that and go to duplicate and we'll turn this one green for now and put this one down here towards this bottom right point maybe about right there and then I'm gonna click on this I'm gonna hold control I'm gonna scale this down maybe about this much I'm just gonna place this going up against the bottom right corner right here I'm actually gonna zoom in just so I can see it a little better you just press plus on the keyboard uh, you could press down on the mouse wheel and move the mouse around to pan the page around, which I'm doing here. I'm just going to place this right about here, just so it's going right outside of this red, this uh, this red corner right here. You don't want it going. You don't want that red corner sticking out. You want it maybe right about there. That looks pretty good. I'll just leave that there. Zoom out by holding Control on the keyboard and rolling down on the mouse wheel. And then I could turn that red. And let's press one to zoom back out. Now what we want to do is right click on this circle and let's duplicate that and we'll turn that green and let's hold control and click and drag and make this thing a lot bigger and we're going to place this circle right about here. We want it intersecting with the red a little bit and then we want this part intersecting with the blue right here. So maybe that size and in that position that's pretty good and once you get it there let's go to our Bezier pen and let's draw a shape going through this. We'll start, we'll start out right here in the center of the circle. We'll click and then bring the line through the intersection right there. We're going to bring the line through that intersection. And you could hold control and roll up and down on the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. We're going to bring it through that line, through that intersection. And just bring the line and then bring it around here through this intersection, between the intersection of the green and the blue. And bring it all around through here and connect it back to the starting point. Then we could press one on the keyboard to zoom back out. And what I'll do is I'll turn that red. I'll get rid of that black outline by holding shift and clicking on the X down here in the bottom left. And then I'll bring the opacity of that down a little bit as well. And then we go back to our select tool. And I'm going to take this green circle and I'm going to raise this to the top with this button right here. Raise selection to the top. And then hold shift and click on that red shape that we just drew and go to path difference and then we could hold shift and click on the red circle and then click on the red shape in the background so we have that all selected and go to path union and then we can click on this red circle right here and hold shift click on the blue circle so we have them both selected and go to path difference now we could take this shape that we just created right here uh, we created this previously. I'm going to turn on the snap to cusp nodes. We'll turn that on by clicking this button and we'll grab the shape down by this lower left corner and just snap it into this corner right here so it fits right back in there. And we'll turn off our snap to cusp nodes. We're done with that. Then we could hold control on the keyboard and take this top arrow and click and drag it down so it's about that much smaller. And I'm going to hold control and click and drag this down to about here. I'm going to turn this green actually so I can see it a little better. And I'm actually going to make this a little bit bigger. You just hold control and click and drag that up to make that bigger. Bring this down a little more. And we want to place this thing so it's going just below the red, the blue crescent right there. Just below it. Oh, that's too much. Maybe about that much. And once we've done that, press 1 on the keyboard to zoom back out. Let's click this blue crescent 
and then right click it and go to duplicate and then hold shift and click on the green object and go to path difference and then we can go to path break apart and then we can hold shift in the keyboard and click on this green object to deselect it. So we just have this one on the right selected. And with that selected, let's just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. Then we can click on the blue crescent, hold shift, click on the green shape, go to path, union, and then hold shift in the keyboard and click on the red object and go to path, difference. And now we're going to uh, we're going to give we're going to put a little ear right here. So uh, in order to do that, I'm going to create a rectangle, a square actually. Go to the rectangles and squares tool. I'm just going to hold Control and click and drag and create a perfect perfect square. Go back to the select tool, click on this to get our rotation handles. Hold Control, click and drag one of these corner arrows around so the the tri the uh, the squares with the corners going up and down. Convert that to a path. We'll go to path, object to path. We'll take our Edit Paths by Nodes tool and click and drag over these center two nodes right here and make them auto smooth with this button. Make selected nodes auto smooth. Go back to the Select tool and grab this arrow and just bring this in. And we'll take this and bring it over here. I'm going to click it a second time to get the rotation handles. And I'm just going to rotate this thing around until it's about right there. And I'm going to click this again to get the scaling handles back. And I'm going to hold Control and Shift and scale this down a little bit. It's a little too big. Maybe make that about that size right there. And then hold Shift in the keyboard and click on the red object. And go to Path, Union. And one final step was, would be to create a little eye right here for the horse. So um, in order to do that, I'm going to create... Uh, another square. So let's go back to the square tool. We'll hold control and click and drag to create a square. Let's go to the select tool. Let's click this a second time to get the rotation handles. Hold control, grab one of the corners and rotate it around. And then I'm going to right click this and go to duplicate and turn that red. And I'm going to hold control and rotate that back to its upright position like that. And then click this again to get back to the scaling handles and hold control and take this top arrow and scale this all the way up until the left and right sides of the red box exceed the corners of the green box and then I'll hold control and I'll just click and drag this up to here until it's just below the corner right there we want it to be just below there and then hold shift and click on the green object and go to path difference and then we can click this again to get our rotation handles and just rotate this thing around about this much. And I'm going to put it over here. We want the edge of this to be somewhat parallel to the edge of the horse's face right here. So I'll bring that around, maybe about that much. I'll click it again to get back to our scaling handles. I'll hold Control and Shift, and I'm going to scale this thing down a lot, maybe about that much. I'm going to put it right here, about halfway through this crescent right here. That should be pretty good, maybe like that. And let me zoom in on this to get a better look. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go, I'm going to, go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. And I'm going to grab this corner. I'm just going to put this up here like that. And go back to the Select tool. And we want the edges, we want the corners of this to be rounded. We don't want um, sharp corners. It won't quite look right. So I'm going to give this rounded corners by uh, giving it a stroke. So I'm going to hold Shift and click on the green color to give that a, a green stroke. And we'll go to the Stroke Style tab. And we'll give that a rounded join and a rounded cap. And we'll go to Path. Stroke to path, path, break apart, path, union. And then we can press 1 on the keyboard to zoom back out. And that eye is a little too big. I'm just going to hold Control and Shift and scale that down a little bit, maybe like that much. And that should be pretty good. Once you have it set up like that, you just hold Shift on the keyboard, click on the red object, and go to path, difference. And we could press 1 on the keyboard to zoom back out. And one last final step would be to smooth out these corners right here. So I'm going to zoom in by holding Control, rolling upwards on the mouse wheel. And you'll see there's like a little hard corner right there. I want to smooth that out. So we'll click on this object, go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. And I'm just going to click and drag over that node right there. And I'm going to click this button that says Make Selected Nodes Auto Smooth. And that should make that smooth and fluid. And I'll do the same thing to this corner right here, because although it may not be 
readily apparent it's still a, a hard corner so we'll click on click and drag over that corner smooth that out as well we can go back to the select tool we can press one on the keyboard to zoom back out and I'm going to take the opacity and bring this all the way up and you can then color this thing however you'd like and that's uh, that's pretty much it we're done creating the horse head logo actually one more step Let's click on this and then click it a second time to get the rotation handles. And let's take this arrow to the top right here. And I'm just going to shift this over to the right a little bit just to give it a little bit of a slant, just to communicate motion a little more, I guess. Uh, I don't know. I guess it, I think it kind of looks better like that. And that's pretty much it. That's how you can create uh, that horse head logo using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.